Dente Rigamortis. I'm Review Cultist. I'm Dr. Leviathan. And I'm Mikey. The E stands for evil. And we're here to discuss sure those... doesn't stand for eggers this week? No. No. And we're here to discuss those internet <laughs> stories, most creepy and most pasta. But in this case, most weird. Um, so, for those of you not in the know... Wait, where's the weirdness in this? It's more of a weird fiction thing than a creepypasta. Isn't creepypasta... <laughs> yeah, I, I, like, it's not creepy, but it's definitely a weirder pasta than... Anyway, um... Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know, I didn't find anything weird in of, of course, okay. Um, <laughs> tonight we have SCP-1867 and the story that followed it, A Most Unfortunate Reunion. So... For those of you not in the know, creepypasta are short internet stories that can copy based across the internet. And for those of you not in the know, SCP, Secure, Contain, Protect, is a, essentially the men in black um, for creepypastas. Um, I had to explain to my wife what SCP types. was yesterday because I was telling her about this. Mm-hmm. And I actually got the SCP, uh, I, well, I got what the acronym stands for, right. <laughs> Fair. All right. Victory was mine. Yeah. Um... So yeah, it's essentially like an organization that keeps like weird and creepy and terrifying and sandblasting objects, things, and entities or from the public. Send criminals down flights of stairs. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, that too. And then they te- use te- they use criminals as test subjects to test those objects and places and creatures and whatnot, because um, they're expendable. Um, so hey, hey, not all. Of them. Not all of them, no. But the some SCP of, Foundation, some you of definitely them are uses rehabilitatable. Them. Yeah. Here's our rehabilitation plan. Just go down these stairs. <laughs> well, clearly you're not doing that for someone you're planning yeah, no. on rehabilitating because <laughs> guess what? Yeah. Hey, Dave. Um, so we'll get into what SCP-1867 is like entry-wise after the story. So uh, for a most unfortunate reunion. So this one's really because I gotta say. Go into, well, no, no. Introduce- I read the I read the case study first. Okay. Then the story, oh. so that I would have context for the goddamn story, and I'm pretty sure that's super important here. Fair enough. Okay, fine. Fine, we will be fine. All right, I'll just pull this up. I, I was really happy that I did <laughs> that? that way. See, I did the reverse because I, I knew partially what it was, but I, I was like, hey, I'm just gonna read it, and just, and then I'll read the, the thing afterward. Um, so SCP eighteen or SCP one eight six nine, seven. Yeah, one nine eight seven. One eight is object class Euclid, and special containment um, is essentially that it has to be kept in a terrarium um, an aquarium sorry an aquarium uh, because SCP-1987 is a sentient telepathic sea slug who claims to be Theodore Thomas Blackwood Victorian era he prefers explorer, Lord Blackwood sorry Lord Blackwood um, a Victorian period um, explorer and naturalist or as I like to call him a fucking pulp hero or adventurer <laughs> <laughs> Like, yeah, uh, but, and you, we'll get into that with the story, because <laughs> he tells stories in the story. Um, there's not a whole lot else about the uh, the entry. Like, it's just, he's harmless, pretty much. Like, he they, they've been doing a lot of, they do a bunch of... Um, he is a fucking sea slug. Yeah. But, <laughs> he also, but he's very accommodating. He also led the SCP to a vault with... 116 unknown species of plants, 107 unknown species of insects, which I feel that number should have been way higher, 28 unknown species of lizards, 23 unknown species of fish, 14 unknown species of amphibians, 12 unknown species of mammals, fossils pertaining to 8 unknown species of dinosaur, and more fossils pertaining to 12 unknown species of prehistoric mammal. Artifacts belonging to 29 unknown indigenous societies, 35 handwritten journals, 20 kilograms of processed opium. This is why I love the guy. Yeah, Uh, (laughs) exactly. um, Collection of firearms that are crazy. Yeah. Like, um, detailed yeah. glows of Mercury, Venus, Mars, and the Galilean moons. A heavily modified carriage containing instruments of unknown purpose. And da, 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 that is all that was in vault. Yeah. Um, and this vault was under a house um, that was being protected by some older woman. Uh, the name escapes me. I don't have my notes here. <laughs> it probably doesn't matter. It probably actually is probably even expunged. And that's why I can't remember it. 
Uh, yes, it was. Yeah. And it was Miss Nonsense. Yeah, it was Miss uh, Blank. Um, and it was, uh, apparently she had, be- she had been there, like, keeping it uh, for Lord Blackwood. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it's a telepathic, sapient sea slug that thinks it's Lord Blackwood. It's very accommodating for the SCP Foundation when it was found. Um, and, like, just t- loves telling stories about his adventures in the, uh, in all the different parts of the world. And, um... However, the SCP Foundation can't co- can't uh, confirm or like uh, they cannot prove that his stories are true or false. Yes, yeah, that's what I was saying. Um, it's a lack of proof, not false. Yeah. Um, and some of his stories are very extravagant and fantastical, to say the least. Um, I think that's pretty much it for the entry. Um, Is there anything else? Yeah, there's just a, an excerpt from an interview with one eight six seven. Yeah. Other than that. Um, you might as well just go to the story because that's a better version. Yeah, it's pretty much a more a it's a more script. stronger narrative to it. Like, because we actually have like it's a story right. of the interview and then beyond. Um, so yeah, the story starts off with Doctor Matthew Eggers. Yes. Um, which is why I've had uh, yeah, I'm aware. Um, <laughs> who's interviewing him and just essentially writing down. Um, in like a notebook, all the like transcribing the the story he's uh, this little slug is telling him, or uh, this slug is telling him as it's moving along the table, like in a it just like and here I was, and uh, it, the the story is pretty much like him riding a dragon in the Hungarian mountain in the Alps, um, fighting off the Kaiser. <laughs> <laughs> um, who's on another dragon, and, like, their dragon squad. And, like, just as it's getting to the good part, um, the interviewer, uh, Dr. Edgar, um, pa- stops him, and because he has to, like, go through this, uh, through this transcript, and then it's gonna take him hours to, like, rewrite it into, like, a full, like, on, like, statement. Because he's using shorthand. Yeah. And, uh, it's gonna take even longer for other sci- other researchers and stuff to, like, look into it and stuff, and try and corroborate it. Um... And so he leaves um, the sea slug. Which seems on the t- absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. Because even if I was a professional, I'd be like, "Really? Tell me more about the fucking dragon fight." Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the yeah, secret yeah. dragon war in like at the end of World War One. Secret War-1. nothing. Oh. It was real. <laughs> I was there. I lost family in that war. And the story. My condolences. <laughs> yeah. And the story that was being That's told. Okay. I took more than I lost. Uh, seemed more of like. Potentially the origin story of how he became. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, because like the slug, the, cause because he, was, he goes on. Yeah, saying, but he doesn't know he's but, a slug. Yeah, and but, that's the best part about yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah that's right. We should have brought that up because that's also in the entry. But yeah, yeah, because it, it explains an amulet that allows souls to be moved from one creature but, to another. Yeah, um, and. I think at the very he end... He was about to pull out, like, this jar that had, like, something, but, like, we... That had something in it, yeah. and we can only... We're left assuming that it's a slug. Yeah. <laughs> and then... <laughs> and then he got caught up because the interviewer Donkey's needs... Juice. Yeah, exactly. Donkey's so, egghead. but... Egghead. While... <laughs> well, as, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as the, uh, the scientist uh, leaves the room, unbeknownst to everyone, even the slug, um, someone... There's a, there's a creature in the ventilation shaft who's been watching the entire event transpire. And waiting for its chance to pounce, and so as it, as the uh, the door closed, and the, he's waiting for the other person, uh, the other scientist to come in and uh, retrieve him. Uh, this other cre- entity comes down the uh, comes down uh, the wall to the table and up the table slowly and methodically, and just as it, and like ju- uh, just when he's uh, at his most vulnerable. Um, Blackwood hears, Oi, Tommy! <laughs> in a cockney accent, or like with like the lower like English the uh, like kind of accent that you hear. It's like, Oi, blimey, kind of thing. And he turns around, goes for his gun, but he doesn't have a gun. <laughs> he doesn't have it on him. <laughs> um, and it's this snail that's talking to him, and it's the most ridiculous thing he's ever seen, because he thinks he's, he doesn't think he's a slug. <laughs> and, um,. The snail says that it's uh, his name is uh, George uh, George uh, Philip Harris the Fourth. Yes, uh, a compatriot of um, Tom's. So, Lord sorry, Lord Blackwood. Um, I swear to God, proper respect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's um, why he doesn't like you. Yeah, clearly. Yeah, you're the one spreading those rumors. That he's a slug. <laughs> <laughs> We're not 
not there yet. <laughs> so yeah, they they have this like fight. Like it's like it's like I have a score to settle with you. It's like oh, it, it just goes on and on with the like, the argument about like who killed who and like he thought he had his number one uh, his number back in eighty five or whatever the word was or whatever the date was. I can't remember. I think it was like sixty something fifty five. Fifty five. Thank you. Okay, it, it doesn't really matter for yeah. the for the synopsis. <laughs> I really actually don't want to like say too much because. I think that's all. Somebody should, people should read this story, but um, regardless, yeah, like he's getting more. They're getting more and more heated, um, and he keeps ref- telling. And the snail finally like says, "Like you do know you're a slug, right?" And it's like, "Well, it's like, well, you're a snail. It's like, it's like, and I'll have I'll have you to t- tell me I'm a, sn- a slug." And he like, "Your uh, mom's a slug." <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and he swings back his eye stalks to punch the slug, and then the scientist comes in to. Uh, to uh, pick him up, uh, retrieve him, and find that him and the snail are having a butt fight <laughs> on the table. So now there are two sapient. Well, and the best part about that is it interrupts the story with an addendum. Yeah. To tell you what the like to tell what you the what sun- the scientist saw from his point of view. Yeah. And it's just like it. It, it really doesn't really... take you out of the story at no. all. It's just fucking hilarious. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um. <laughs> So yeah, you just go yeah. Then uh, now there are two uh, two SCP eighteen or one eight. Am I doing that wrong? Is it one nine eight seven? One eight six one eight six seven. Okay, one eight six seven. Sorry, it's the numbers get me all the time. Um, and this new entry that's right beside him, and they're constantly talking. The the one uh, George is constantly talking to him uh, from his tra- uh, his aquarium, and he's just like, oh god, where's my where's an elephant gun? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. Elephant gun against a snail. Yeah. <laughs> Lord Blackwood believes in overkill. Yes. <laughs> Lord Blackwood may be an ancestor of Burt Gummer. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's a hack job of the synopsis for the story, but that's pretty well the story. Um, so, yeah, this one's not a creepypasta per se. Um, it's just a fun, like, weird story. Uh, and it's funny because I actually had to look up because I was, like, curious if this was one of the J-series of SCP entries. J-series entries being joke entries. This is not one of the joke entries. This is not on the list of joke entries. <laughs> um, so, otherwise, like, aside from, like, for the entry, um, honestly, aside from it not being, like, creepy at all, but that's fine, um, there's a lot of, like, material here for like gaming or something for like for a story like it's not creepy but I want to keep reading this story I want to know more about Lord Blackwood the slug the sea slug <laughs> like see personally I feel like we get the right amount you're probably right but like, like I'm totally done I don't need any more I enjoyed what I got though mm-hmm. you know um I I that that's my stance on this um like yeah, we kind of got alluded to the fact that, oh, that's probably how he became a sea slug. But I like the fact that it's still not stated as such. It's left, you know, well, it, it's a good explanation. Might yeah, not be V1, They though. hint at a possible cause. And mm-hmm. then, you know, um, so, yeah, like, I appreciate the fact that they flat out, you know, that he didn't get to finish his story and then mm-hmm. about becoming a sea slug. Yeah. Um, and I... Yeah, just the, the the little snippets of his past that we get through his story and through his talking with uh, Tommy. Uh, 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 no, George. he's Tommy, George, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> hey, George. Um, <laughs> that back and forth, like, alluded to, like, a good handful of events. But then it's over. Yeah. It's done. And I like it there. I, I like it the way it is. I genuinely wouldn't change anything about this. This is going to be a really boring episode. From yeah. Perspective. Yeah. Like, I do agree. Like, honestly, like, it is good. It's just my wanting for more because I'm Yeah, but you want more <laughs> until you get so much that it's shit. Fair enough. Like, you continuously want more until you're given too much, at which point you're like, fuck. Well, and if you do look up the uh, tag Blackwood, mm-hmm. there's like five more extra stories and things like they. He does a Q and A and things like okay, that. Okay, I may have to go back and read those. Shit. <laughs> See, so there is more for you, and I can stop where I am. Yeah, we're totally not going to do it on the show. <laughs> we're not. No, we aren't. I know. Um, 
Because unfortunately, you on that. <laughs> all right. <laughs> um, yeah, no, like the writing was was competent. I really enjoyed the read. Um, then again, my when it comes to write, the writing, my my view is sometimes skewed. So, how do you guys think about the writing? Is it, it was fine. Honestly, I didn't pay too much attention to it um, because I was just having a good fun time. So I can guarantee this: there was nothing like horrendously, glaringly evil about the writing. Yeah. Like, it was competent. There may have been mistakes that I didn't catch, but honestly, once I had read the entry and then I moved on to the story, I was like, okay, well, I'm not... I'm not going to take this story seriously because it doesn't want me to. Yeah. And that is the story I got, a story that was fine without me, with me not taking it seriously. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, honestly... It, it, was, it was just fun. <laughs> but, yeah. Was there anything wrong with it? Not that I did. Yeah. Well, I... However, I'm sure Mr. Picky yes. McNitterson here yes. found something. Let's hear it. <laughs> I, I did find something. And uh, it's when Lord Blackwell is telling his story. Uh, to give it the right context, I have to elaborate the part that comes before the sentence. Okay. Because the sentence itself can work. Uh, so, thousands of feet, uh, thousands of feet above the forests of Baden, my eyes level with the peak of the Feldberg itself. My legs wrapped for dear life around the neck of the Austrian green dragon, one hand fiercely clutching the reins as I struggled to bring myself about. Here it is. The saddle had fallen to the ground when I cut it loose taking the beast's Crusian rider with it. Yeah. So it's that thing that gets he suddenly falling off of the beast? No. There like, is no saddle on it. No. Because it had fallen loose because he cut it loose. To get rid of the other guy. So that the other... Ru- so that its previous rider yeah. would no longer be on it and controlling it so that he could take it. Yeah. However, now because it's bareback, essentially, like... I have to imagine barebacking even a horse sucks. So, okay, so the difference is that barebacking a horse is that a horse has an up and down motion, yeah, which is going to crush crush your twig and berries. Yeah. Whereas a dragon flying is going to be a smooth motion. Mm. It won't be That's as true. jarring. Yeah. So it won't be as hard on um, your groins, <laughs> your genitalia. Or your spine. Yeah. Because I'm imagining that's not fun on your spine in general, yeah. either. Being jackhammered like that, yeah. So, <laughs> might want to pick a different phrase next time. <laughs> or a different term. Yeah, I chose it, for, I chose it appropriately. <laughs> I don't think you know what you chose. All right, whatever. <laughs> Moving on. I'm just picturing Lord Black and a jackhammering a green dragon now. <laughs> okay, that is your part. That's what you did. <laughs> All right, I'm sorry. <laughs> See, I was thinking anatomically, and then you went, like, gutter mind. <laughs> no, I went to the obvious place. You beelined <laughs> obvious place. You <laughs> did what, what yeah. any normal human being, red-blooded Canadian, do. Fair enough. Alright, so, yeah, yeah, like, I can, so. like, I, I picture, like, he's just having trouble, like, again, like, he just got, he doesn't have a saddle, he's on the back of a, the neck of a dragon, that's probably moving very fast, so, yeah, he's just but, crambling, or, like, stum- like, uh, wow, I just, that word escapes me now. Fuck. Struggling? Yeah, he's struggling to, thank you, yeah, no, I just, I know, uh, struggling to, um, to get the reins to, like, get a grip, um, so he doesn't fall off this thing now. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That, that one's like that. That's that, not even a nitpick. You're just wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you just look. I, I in my opinion, that. yeah. In my opinion, there may be other people who agree with you, but remember, any idiot can find someone to agree with them. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Um. Yeah. That that was the only one that sort of took me away because I was trying to figure it, that out. As I was reading it, it just didn't. Your mental image just was not flow well All right. for me. Um, <clears throat> anyway, and then trying to just find stuff, uh, I found a run-on sentence that is really <laughs> long. 
Was it in, in a conversation or was it? No, like, it wasn't was a conversation. Okay. No, because if it, he, was, it was Blackboard. If he was like, going to take ones out of conversation, the one he read before the one he had trouble with, yeah, is a horrible, horrible one. Yeah, Fair. <laughs> yeah. But it's in conversation, and Blackwood does seem a little long winded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which I I forget. Yeah. Uh, so uh, this is when uh, he comes face to face with uh, Tommy. Well, Tommy and George. No, yeah, he's yeah. Tommy. Yeah, yeah. George is. Yeah. They're face to face. You're a towel. <laughs> Your mom's a sea <clears throat> So. <laughs> it, here goes the round sentence. The nudie branch half instinctively attempted to reach for his hip before recalling that he was not carrying a gun and instead turned himself around as fast as one in his condition could do so, and found himself face to face with the last thing he had expected so rude a call to emanate from, a common snail, its pulsating eye stalks fixated directly on him. Okay, that is a really long sentence. Yeah, honestly, I probably just corrected that in my head as I yeah. read it because, yeah. like, you could have stopped it. Like the, the the one that the obvious part to stop it is like right before he could have stopped that like three yeah. times. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the most obvious one for me was, was this like right before the snail before like telling us what it is. But yeah, there are yeah. Other, there are other spots. Yeah, like, my English mostly... teachers, and if I'd have been looking at it like an English teacher, would have had a fucking field day with the red pen on that one. Yeah. Because there mm. is there is so much wrong with that sentence. Yeah. However, I still didn't notice it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> partially because yeah, I was enjoying myself, yeah. and probably partially because I just I auto corrected it. Yeah, yeah. Well, Which we mentally do sometimes on the show. Oh, well, exactly. More than once. Oh yeah, and there there was one thing that I read, and I mentally was like auto corrected. Okay, that makes sense, and then I couldn't find it again. I was like, damn it, it's auto corrected for good now. <laughs> <laughs> It's just always see you always see it that way now, damn it. <laughs> nice. So yeah. wow. Yeah, th- this one was entertaining and I agree it did take a while to actually find mm. something potentially wrong with it like that run on sentence. Yeah, yeah I, I feel bad for your uh for your Twitter uh quote this week. <laughs> Cause uh like so which one are you choosing? Why? <laughs> there are so many good quotes in this story. Okay, yeah, quote, you know, but usually his quotes are nitpicks, right? Yeah. Yeah, they're the nitpick quotes that he chooses. Well, he doesn't have any nitpicks, which means he gets to choose a quote from anything. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, go- I recommend going with the sentence about two snails headbutting each other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Getting back yes. to... <laughs> I mean... That's ridiculous. Yeah, <laughs> especially like I just like I, I can especially I just, out of context. Yeah, and, I, and with that, with that like with that addendum, like I saw like like just like the uh, the scientist like walking up over to the door, looking out through the window, and just seeing that happening. He's got like a glass dish or something. He just like to drops it, and he's like, no, no, he's just. No, because that would explain that. Oh, that would God. imply that he's shocked and amazed by what he's seeing. He's just like, like, oh. Now there's two of them. Well, fuck. I need another dish. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, um... Good thing they're snails. I have lots of time to go get one. <laughs> they're not gonna... T- I honestly... Actually, I, I was actually... Before that happened, I was expecting the, the the snail to be, like, beaten to a bloody pulp somehow. But then it was just, like... It was so much more fun to have them just, like, eh, like, cripple fighting. <laughs> <laughs> and I use that term based off the South Park episode, not... Uh huh. The other reason, um, but getting back to something I, uh, I said earlier. Sensitive. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> getting back to something I mentioned earlier about like this, like the entry itself being good fodder for something. Like mm-hmm. we play uh, RPG games. Like I honestly could take this entry, take this story even, and add that onto it and run a fucking pulpy as shit Call of Cthulhu game. Like um, game. Honestly, like in the, the, in the world way, of it. the best way to do it would be to have Lord Blackthorn as a sea slug, <laughs> as an NPC. Yeah, and uh, then just... anything other than that. Oh yeah, uh, your your PCs are gonna have to be fucking sea slug or some shit. And that's just no boring. Or like yeah, like take all those <laughs> objects that are in that vault and like have things like and like have them like work, like have like scenarios be like based off of those like. And have Lord Blackwood be um, like the no, because again, boring. No, you think so? The things in the the things in the vault are largely boring. There is approximately two interesting things in there. 
for you maybe. I saw like a bunch of opportunities in that list. There's his firearms, which are inoperable, and then there's the modified carriage. See, I also saw the globes as potential because, like, using the care in conjunction with the carriage that teleports you to different pla- the different planets. And How do you know that's what it does? We don't do know. You know. It's it, it leaves, umbrella it, it, isn't what gets him to Venus because it leaves. They have like there's a bunch of instruments in the in the carriage that are that they don't know what they do, and I'd use that to like have, oh like one of those objects does this. Yeah, it, but you see, that doesn't make the globes interesting. That just makes the carriage interesting. Yeah. At the same time, like I, I feel like I could have like I, I'm an imaginative like, mind. I could have a lot of fun with those. In that the- would be like me saying that a globe of the Earth is interesting because of all of the shit that happens on Earth. It's I hear not. you, but it's like not. no, yeah, I hear you. The globe is not interesting. The globe itself is an interesting. Outside thing. my door is interesting. Yeah, and don't get me wrong. I I personally think that those globes would be amazing, fun, cute cool things to have in on, in my own personal library. However... Yeah, I guess I'm not looking they, at them they're like... They're not good storytelling things. Okay, yeah. I guess I'm looking at them more like like inspiration for like where something could go from this story. But, yeah, but that's more... But you understand what I'm saying. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. Like, it's the same thing as yeah, what you just said. But... Yeah, no. Like, there's there's parts of that vault like that I think we could have like a lot of fun with in a game. A lot of it, as long just... as like what's also like an NPC, like, <laughs> or even have like him Honestly. as the NPC and then have him like have him be like the um, the wraparound part of the campaign where he's ta- he tells a story and then you guys play out that story. No, the best the best way to use this entry for an RPG, not the only way, but in my opinion, the best way mm-hmm. would be to cure him of his of his sea sluggishness. Okay. And do, do a quest about that. Ah. Because that, that's probably the best way to include him as much as possible. And that's honestly the best part about his entry is the character of, of Black- Lord Blackwood. Yeah, Lord Blackwood, yeah. Um, and the fact that he's a sea slug. Mm-hmm. That's probably the most interesting, like the most unique yeah, thing about the yeah. entry. Mm-hmm. Everything else you could get from, any, that, from yeah, anywhere that's true, else. Yeah. Like, like mm-hmm. honestly, like half those o- objects looked like things that like I've seen in pulp stuff, or like in hell, even just other stories. But like just it like different. anything, you get like a brief. You get a brief. No, yeah, but I, you know what I mean, though. Like they're just like there's not described, but there's like they're named off things like they're listed yeah. in a list written right. by scientists. Fine. Apparently, I'm not going anywhere with that. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, I do agree definitely that like Lord Blackwood himself, his character, his charisma, <laughs> like of him, his character himself. Is like probably the best thing about the story. <laughs> I also like the fact that he's Lord Blackwood and he's this colorful um, sea slug, and yeah. um, George is some <laughs> Cockney commoner, yeah. and he's just a common snail? everyday snail. You're right. Yeah, I, I didn't <laughs> actually realize that until just now. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I'm awesome. awesome. Oh, because uh, Lord Blackwood has telepathy. Yeah, and apparently, well, so does George. Well, no, well, well, yeah, they, we should, well, that, because he does? Des- he does describe George or as actually just talking. So I'm like, yeah, but it's, so is Lord Blackthorn. In his yeah, in his Lord Blackthorn is yeah. also punching him, not swinging at him with eye stalks. <laughs> True. So the things in their head, yeah, are different than what they are in reality. Like, they were duking it out hardcore in their heads. Yeah. But in reality, it was two slugs butting heads. Mm-hmm. So, in my opinion, um, the only reason they would keep George is if he was also a telepathic snail. Stands to reason. Otherwise, why would they keep him? They'd just put him out in the garden, or kill him, or flush him down the toilet, or any number of things to get rid of him. Yeah, or they say. And then he'd come back a year later and be like, Oi! The fuck was that about? Because <laughs> that's how long it took him to get across the road. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, this one's unfortunately this one's probably not going to be as exciting as some of our other ones because there isn't a whole lot else to say. From we had a lot of fun reading this one. Like that's yeah, the thing. Like, it, it's and there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah, there's nothing glaring. Nothing. And I genuinely assume that this is really the case with most SCP shit. Is that there's not really anything wrong with it. Yeah, when I actually when I pil- when I, I grabbed this one a couple of probably last year and put it on the list um, because we were we were looking for SCPs that had stories and there there wasn't a huge list of story ones with stories. Then I went back to it yesterday and checked it. They have a whole section category now for stories for SCPs. So. 
I'll look through that list and see if we can find ones that are based off creepier SCPs for the show. Okay, um, they have stairs. I'm not... Re- okay, fair enough. What about hallways? Because we actually had one no. that was re- uh, referred to us but from all... That's from just stairs there. with... That's just level <laughs> stairs. Okay. <laughs> well, well, we'll see. Um, and also, yeah, that goes out to any listeners. If you have an SCP uh, entry that has a cool story to it as well, um, not just the entry itself. Or a bad one. Or a bad one, I guess. Yeah, because... That's what we do on the show, <laughs> um, as well. Uh, by all now means, I've got all this pent up rage. I haven't vented this week. It's okay. We'll do a slime beast episode next week. <laughs> <laughs> He's looking at me so hard right now. Oh, I'm just wondering if I can actually rip your head off and shit down your throat, like literally, as opposed to figuring. That would be a feat. I think I can do it. So if I'm not here next week, you'll know why. <laughs> Um, However, uh, in other news, I'll have gotten a new toilet. (laughs) Fair enough. Um, So yeah, recommendations. Um, I don't think I have to go around the table and just say unanimously. No, I wouldn't recommend it. No, okay, fair enough. It's horrible. I mean, a slug who's some sort of Victorian lord. Come on. Yeah, we're, we're, uh, this one's all you're getting recommendations all around. Um, read, uh, I read it. I read the story first with a little bit of inkling of the entry. Um, like I knew there was a slug. I didn't know what the slug's deal was until I read the story, and then I read the entry. But you probably should read it, the entry first, and then read the story. Well, to get and if more you context. don't, honestly, the entry is redundant if you read the story yeah. first because you know what, you know what? the deal yeah. is. Because that, yeah, that was the same thing. However, me, so. I feel like if I had gone into this story not knowing that it was about a Sleep. sea slug who was a man who had telepathy, I'm pretty sure I would have been really annoyed. Like, I, I would have just been like, this story is shit. It would have completely turned me on this story, I think, if I hadn't have read the entry first. All right. Fair enough. So, yeah, read the entry first. However, I'm a fickle motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, ch- do it, switch it up at your own discretion. Um, well, if you've listened to this episode, you can probably just read the story and skip the entry altogether. Th- yeah, because we did pretty much go through it. Um, unless you want to just read, like, a documentation of, like, a... If you want to read bureaucracy, <laughs> the, uh, the, uh, the of the document, uh, the entry wasn't a horrible read. It was brief and concise. It didn't, you know, it it, it was an entry. It wasn't <laughs> a, um, you know, a big run-on thing. Yeah, that's true. It's like it's like, definitely it not didn't as... overstay its welcome. That that's really all I need to say about it. Because yeah, the entry itself, is fine, right. as well as the story. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, at your discretion. Go read it. Uh, and I'm sure there's readings of it on YouTube. If, um, if I find one, um, I'll leave it in the description below. Uh, Mikey, do you have anything else to say before we sign off? No, no. It was an entertaining read, although lacking in the creepy... Yeah, that's that's the one thing. Like, again, I'm going to try and find some SCPs that are a little bit more creepy. This one was, again, like, I was looking... It was more or less I was looking for ones with stories, and at the time there wasn't a whole lot that I could find. So, hmm. I think I went for SCP for Santa Claus, but look at that one <laughs> yeah anyway um so that has been this week's episode of El Dente Rigamortis if you like what you heard and if you didn't leave us a comment in the comment section below where this gets posted whether it be on Kiwi6 Facebook YouTube Tumblr uh also we're all on Twitter at E Stands for Evil Dr. Leviathan and Review Cultist uh send us a review or uh, rank us on iTunes every little bit helps uh, and you can send us a uh, email at aldente rigamortis at gmail.com. That's A L D E N T E R I G A M O R T I S at gmail.com, where you can send us suggestions for other creep pluses you'd like us to discuss on the show, as well as SCPs. Um, and uh, if you'd like to take a look at uh, the title cards for each episode, they can be found on the Tumblr site at crazonstudios.tumblr.com, as well as uh, posted on the Facebook page, aldente rigamortis at Facebook. Um, and we're on Patreon. So if you'd like to support us, um, we have a few little things uh, uh, that we give extra for uh, patrons, um, but really it's just to uh, keep the lights on for now. Uh, but we plan to expand if we get more um, patronage. So I think that's about it for... And just yeah. in the future. Yeah, and for <laughs> in the future, yeah. Because we're, kind of, we we're always throwing ideas out for like things we could do aside from our basic show. So 
Um, yeah, I think that's about it. So, until next time, I have been your host, Review Cultist. I'm still Dr. Leviathan. And I'm Mike. The E stands for evil. And this has been Al Dente Rigamortis. Sleep well. things call me maybe and i was like man that's horrible hilariously horrible <laughs> hey i just met you <laughs> this is crazy but here's my number call Do me I maybe look like richard cheese <laughs> i can't change the style of the song <laughs> i just you get you doing it you're like and i'm dr leviathan <laughs> No, no, I'd actually probably try and do it serious, which is why it would be even funnier. 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 Even funnier.